can get him to like my Philly cheesesteak season 2016-17 enough to earn a five all day, his highest food rating. Um, I'm going to make mine, and this is based on, I love all of the great Philly cheesesteak makers of Philly. Please don't, don't hate on me because I like going around trying everybody's, but I'm going to use roast tomatoes. I just added lots of fresh thyme. The oven's screaming hot at 450 degrees, and I've halved a tray full of plum aroma tomatoes. You drizzle them with olive oil. You've got the oregano and thyme, salt and pepper, and roasting tomatoes makes them more tomatoey. Did you know that? No. Learn something new every day. There you go. He's not a vegetable lover, so I keep trying to sell him. <laughs> um, what do you call lettuce? Crunchy water. Crunchy water. Okay, so we're going to roast our tomatoes, uh, 450, 500 degrees, mid oven, until they slump and start to curl up like this. It intensifies their flavor and makes them really tender and delicious on a sandwich. So we're going to throw these guys in a super hot oven and they'll be in there about 25 to 30 minutes. You don't want dried tomatoes, you just want roast tomatoes. Meanwhile, I've got some working in the back. You're going to cook some onions low and slow. If you've ever had a Philly cheesesteak, you know that everybody rolls with the sweet onions. So the only way you can get an onion super sweet and tender like that is to cook it low and slow. I like my onions cooked in butter. We're going to cook this down, and it's going to basically be like a little bit of French onion soup on your Philly or whatever. So I've got... Uh, Gosh, a pile of onions here. Wait till your butter foams. I'm kind of rushing this along here. Get your onions in there. Cook them low and slow. Whenever you're trying to get the liquids out of something and to get it to cook quicker, add salt. The salt draws the liquid out. I also love the flavor of bay with onion. And we're rolling kind of Italian style here. We've got the thyme and oregano on the roasted tomatoes. I'm going to throw in a big old bay leaf, which is a, a traditional Italian pairing with, with sweet onions. So we're going to cook that over here. I'm going to add a little crushed garlic. Now, down here, I like to take giardinetta, which is hot pickled celery, carrots, cauliflower, and pepperoncini peppers, all in a jar in delicious pickly juice that's nice and salty. And I grind it into relish for these sandwiches. When we come back, we're going to cook up the meat. Here we go. Today, I've got my buddy, Dane Drop, sitting at the kitchen counter. He's waiting for my version of Philly cheesesteak season 2016-17. So this is the proper cut to use for a proper Philly cheesesteak. This is boneless ribeye. You throw it in the freezer so you can shave it paper thin. And while it's still cold, throw it onto a hot cast iron griddle. And it cooks in like a minute on each side until it's nice and caramelized. Get back on there, baby. There we go. And then, of course, you start chopping it up with the side of your spatula. And when Gino's makes this Milano style, he puts sliced uh, beefsteak tomato on top. I'm using our oven roast tomatoes up on top. Yeah, that we cooked up with the oregano and the thyme. And you see how I'm stacking them right on top of the pile of steak. And then we're going to hit it with balsamic drizzle. And then we're going to top that with provolone so the heat of the grill melts the provolone. When you come back, I'll show you how to get it. Finding my roll with my chopped up giardinetta Italian relish. I've got my shaved, beautiful pile of ribeye, roasted tomatoes, balsamic drizzle, and provolone into the roll. And I am now topping it with my sweet onions and garlic. <laughs> and now I'm really going to mess you up. I'm going to put in some Parmesan cheese potato chips. <laughs> yeah, I may be a Jeff fan, but I'm a Philly girl too. Just get it all in there. I don't know, but make 
make sure you get some of everything in that 